Is it wise to buy a power supply by the brand Colink? Many people haven't even heard of that brand, while others have probably already treated themselves to a product or two from this manufacturer. I for one use a Colink PC case myself and I'm very satisfied with it. But does this satisfaction and equality actually carry over to Colink's power supply lineup? Well, I definitely have some criticism. To be exact, today I'll be dealing with the Colink Regulator 850 Watt PSU with an 80 plus gold rating. The new ATX 3.0 and PCIe 5.0 standards are of course supported, and so we do also get the infamous 12 volt high power connector. Price wise, the regulator model at roughly 130 US dollars currently is on the more expensive side compared to many of its competitors with similar specs and features. Therefore, the unit must deliver in order to convince us consumers. Ultimately, is it worth buying a cooling power supply or not? What are the pros and cons here? And what about safety and quality? The scope of delivery is fairly standard. We get the PSU itself, all the power cables and power cord, four screws, as well as some paper documentation. First, I'd like to address the compact size. The 850 watt version of this regulator power supply has a length slash depth of just 140 millimeters, making it fairly compact for its output power. And therefore, it also fits easily into pretty much any PC case out there. If it matters, the aesthetics are rather plain and simple. Design-wise, it's nothing out of the ordinary, really. Of course, this is a fully modular unit, which means all cables are detachable. The respective connections on the PSU are nicely labeled with numbers. It's a shame that the connectors wobble a bit. The 12 volt high power connector doesn't and is unaffected by it, but the rest does wobble. This doesn't affect functionality, but you can tell that the manufacturer isn't particularly strict when it comes to quality in that regard. Now, due to its compact size, there's only room for a 120mm fan, which features a fluid dynamic bearing, FDB, and operates quietly. There's also a switch on the rear of the PSU for either turning the semi-passive mode on or off. In semi-passive mode, the fan remains off at a PSU load of up to 40%, so it doesn't make a sound. If more power needs to be provided, or the temperatures inside the power supply rise, the fan will kick in. However, I prefer and recommend having the fan set to active cooling mode, in which the fan is constantly spinning. It's very quiet anyway. Cooling's regulator unit makes use of a single rail design with just a single 12 volt rail that's supposed to be able to provide 70.5 amps. All standard protections are on board. There is no need to worry about that, at least in theory. The requirements for the ATX 3.0 specification are met and thus we also get a native 12 volt high power connector on the PSU side with a rated power of 600 watts. The cable length is quite satisfactory overall, I can't complain. Obviously, these are flat ribbon cables, which I personally prefer over sleeved ones, but some enthusiasts will disagree with me. At the end of the day, it's a matter of preference. The power connectors we get are as follows. One 24 pin, two CPU 8 pin, four PCIe 8 pin, one 12 volt high power 16 pin at a rating of 600 watts, six SATA and four Molex. For my taste, there could have been two more SATA power connectors, but since we are moving towards M.2 SSDs these days, it's understandable we don't get more. All right, now I'd like to get a look inside such a regulator PSU. At this point, of course, I'd like to explicitly point out and warn you that opening up power supplies and touching any of the components inside can be fatal and life-threatening under certain circumstances. Unfortunately, my expertise, which is basically close to non-existent when it comes to power supplies, is not sufficient to successfully identify the platform used here. I'm a bit at a loss this time. However, the unit is kept very tidy, neat and has only few cables, which are generally good and welcome qualities. As expected, we do get LLC and a DC-DC converter. These days, that's pretty much standard. By the way, Colink is advertising they've used 100% Japanese capacitors here. Unfortunately, 
I can't fully confirm that claim because I had some trouble identifying them. On the primary side, we can spot two electrolytic capacitors by the manufacturer Nippon Chemican specified for 420 volts and 270 microfarad. However, the rated max temperature is at 85 degrees Celsius. In 99% of cases, that's always sufficient, but I'd like to point out that even Nippon Chemican has even more durable, better caps in their lineup with a 105 degree rating. So obviously, Cooling didn't want to spend the extra money, instead opted to save costs. This isn't meant to be criticism, but I wanted to point that out. Looking at the secondary side, I was able to spot caps by the Japanese brand Panasonic. I practically reached a dead end with those polymer solid caps though. It was hard to identify the manufacturer behind those. Some of it matches with my research, but sadly I can't guarantee with certainty whether they are from Japan or Hong Kong. That means we'll just have to assume that Cooling is providing correct information so as not to accuse anyone of anything. Now let's run through a few quick tests. Unfortunately, both my testing possibilities and knowledge in this field are very limited, which is why I can only do extremely primitive testing. So we are starting things off with simplest voltage tests at idle. The 12 volt rail at 12.03 almost matches the nominal value here, while the 3.3 and especially 5 volt rails tend to move towards their maximum tolerance values. If moderate load is put onto the PSU, the 3.3 volt value improves, the 12 volt rail still delivers a good stable value, while the 5 volt rail stands out in a more negative way. With a measured 5.22 volts, we are basically at the threshold of what's acceptable, yet barely remain within the maximum tolerance range. That is not exactly a great result. The deviation from the nominal value is quite big. The achieved efficiency values with that 80 plus gold rating is as expected. Perhaps slightly worse values than with many other competitors with gold efficiency, but all in all a satisfactory result. Conclusion Well, Coolink hasn't exactly built the best reputation for their power supplies throughout the years. According to others within the community, most models are only to be considered okay, neither particularly good nor bad. I too have come to that conclusion. The Colink Regulator PSU with 850 watts offers solid features across the board, but has some drawbacks here and there. I found the wobbly power connections on the PSU end a bit annoying. The 5 volt rail which deviates noticeably from its nominal value also left a queasy feeling. And finally, at a price of roughly $130 for this unit, I feel like it's too expensive for what it offers. There are numerous competing models offering the same, if not even more, at a lower price. Nonetheless, today's regulator model also does some things well. I find the compact design at just 140mm exemplary and the fact that we can decide for ourselves whether the fan is running actively or semi-passively is nice too. Other than that, the Colink regulator power supply doesn't exactly stand out from the masses. While I kinda wish to refrain from giving out a recommendation, I can't advise against buying one either, as it's basically just okay. That's how I see it anyway. Now it's your turn. What would you rate this Colink PSU like? Would you install one in your system or would you have some reservations? If you enjoyed the video, I'd love receiving a like, but if not, there's always the dislike button to take care of that. With that in mind, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.